OK, brilliantly. Uh, so we're recording. Hi, Roger. Hi, Ranjan. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. It appears that there's some story in the paper. I saw it in the investigations editor. Billy Kember of The Times had written a story about Robert Jenrick, the Minister for Housing and Local Government, mm -hmm. um, being paid. A, a, the Tories received £12,000 from Richard Desmond, and this is being focused on as being connected to Richard Desmond, formerly editor of The Express, uh, being granted permission. Owner. Sorry, yeah, the owner, did I, what did I say? Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the owner of The Express, big difference. Uh, and um, yeah, so basically there's a story going round that the Minister for Housing has t essentially taken a bung from Desmond and that that bung of 12K uh, came after he'd given permission for something which overrode uh, Tower Hamlets, the local authority, giving Richard Desmond permission to do a big development. So basically, it looks like, according to the story, corrupt Tory takes payment from corrupt uh, billionaire so that billionaire can make lots more money from housing development, uh, but none of the housing will be affordable. No, it's preposterous. It, it's... But, but, but the words look like that. Now, I'm asking you about this because you mentioned that this thing had been going through the courts a few days ago, and I know that you've read a lot more of the plans than anyone else would have, and you have a background in development. So can you explain what, where is this story inaccurate, and what is the bigger picture, particularly eventually going to the social implications of what affordable housing means? Okay, first of all, the two allegations which they're trying to float are these. One is the £12,000 contribution to the Tory party. The other is that the application was rushed through um, to beat a deadline for a new um, contribution in lieu uh, of infrastructure, etc., that Tower Hamlets were bringing in. And the estimates are that that would save, allegedly would save um, the developer between 30 and 50 million pounds in additional payments. So what, for, are the, so, so, so what are the two allegations again? Can you just say them again? The, the allegation is that the, um, the contribution was made for this favour and that the favour actually, by rushing the thing through, saved a potential payment of up to 50 million pounds in additional planning gain. OK, so the newspaper is basically saying he paid 12K and saved 50 mil. Uh, well, I mean, the stories appeared in several different places. Uh, there was already a question in, in the Houses of Parliament from um, Janet Cummings MP. She's an MP for Bradford. Um, and she asked a question not of this week's PMQs, but last week's. Um, and I'd already been looking at this scheme because I've been looking at several quite large schemes in London because I'm a property developer and, and I've been looking to, you know, buy into the London market. Um, now, um, my background is in Docklands um, development. Oh, that and area. So I, I, I know this site very well. I used to sail at the Docklands Sailing Centre, which is next door. Um, I, you know, I lived on the Isle of Dogs for a number of years. I had my business there for, for many years and I'm reopening my business there. Um, now, the, the, the other article that you sent through, which I think feeds into this and is in many respects a, a more serious and sensible article. The FT article by the, 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 the FT FT political FT. correspondent Jim Picard, yeah looking at the overhauling of the planning system because the planning system has become overcomplicated. Now, anyone that argues with that statement has got to be nuts. The end of that article, there's a paragraph saying there's something like, um, is it um, nine or ten million consented homes that haven't made a start that have been given in the last ten years? I think that's the figure. Um, 
there's no number given here. Yeah. yeah they don't give a number. It, it definitely does, because I read it. Uh, uh, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. System, it, it says here, look, the last paragraph, the planning system is not a barrier to house building, he insisted. Nine in ten planning applications are approved by council, while as our recent analysis shows, more than a million homes given planning permission in the last decade have not yet been built. Now, I would argue there's a reason why many of these consented homes haven't been built and won't be built. So did you say consented homes? Consented, consented. homes. So basically, so did you say consented or consented? Consented. Planning OK, yeah. so, so it's not so difficult to get permission, but for some reason it's hard to get it done. Well, it is hard to get permission. Sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, but but the, the, a lot of the permissions that come through are, are frankly unimplementable or um, the whole the whole market demand has been distorted by these. You know, one assumes they're well-meaning attempts to to address a shortage of affordable housing, particularly in metropolitan centres, you know, not okay. London. Um, the. The point, though, is that um, the Section 106 agreements, which have been attempted, have got more and more complicated. The stamp duty regime has become more and more complicated. Um, and the. Asking for in lieu contributions to affordable housing, I. Uh, it, it is complicated. There's, there's no other way to describe it. Not only is it complicated, um, the local authorities are understaffed to administer um, and also recruit the necessary people that they need to understand these conditions that they're placing on planning consents. It, it is, it, it's ridiculously complicated and it distorts the market. If the market wasn't distorted, more people would be building affordable homes. The distortion in the market is uh, has been enabled by these misguided attempts to push the market in a different direction. What's happened is that um, uh, the high end has been pushed up and up and up to pay for what's being asked for in terms of planning gain. And a lot of these schemes, there's one called the Spire on the Isle of Dogs, which, which uh, is a huge scheme, got consent several years ago. Uh, the affordable housing has not been built and neither has the scheme. Um, there, there are lots of other schemes in Docklands which, which aren't coming out of the ground, which are similarly uh, conditioned. Um, and uh, the, the, the distortion did start many years ago. I mean, I, I used to... I, I spoke to Gareth Benden and Stephen Gamester um, uh, about the problem of selling flats off plan to foreign investors. Who are started they? Off, it started off selling. Them no, who are they? Who are those two people? So Gareth Benden is a basically a, a Whitehall Mandarin who came down with Eric Sorensen um, and uh, was. Eric's right hand man and uh, they, they they ran the LDDC with Sir Michael Pickard for the last I don't know probably the last three or four years of, of the LDDC and what does that mean they, is that the London something the London Docklands Development Corporation right. okay, which is mentioned in the FT article right okay um and the I mean the story of Docklands is it is an interesting one because it was an enterprise zone and the planning function was taken from Tower Hamlets and placed in the hands of this quango um, and several other quangos were set up there was one in Manchester one in Telford I mean they, they, they set them up one in Liverpool they, they, they set them up variously around the country um, and the London Docklands one um, went through a kind of a, an evolution uh, the first one was typified by a sort of a housing boom and the printers like News International going to Wapping. They're not, you know, the Telegraph uh, moving its printing to uh, uh, West Ver where West Ferry Print is the site in question now. The Financial Town Printing Works went to East India Dock, for instance. Um, 
so so you had the printers then you also had a lot of residential development that was done um in the uh mid to late 80s then there was the huge crash in the housing market a big company called telford homes went bust um there, there were all sorts of problems with people who had paid deposits to buy these homes to live in uh, not actually completing on their purchases because the prices had dropped you know below what what uh, they'd agreed to pay etc um that was the first one then the next uh uh thing that came along was the, the sort of the commercial boom as it were where where a lot of office space got got built and you know there was an oversupply and it was arguably in fact it's it, it, it's probably a successful argument the tax breaks on the enterprise zone uh led to an oversupply of office space and all this stuff is pretty well documented. I, I, I put together a, a, a video on, on, on my company's YouTube channel, um, which uh, has a very good interview with Robert John. And Robert John um, was basically Paul Reitman's right hand man at, at, at Olympia in York. And Robert actually says about the crash in 1992, where there'd been an over, you know, basically overdevelopment across the board, fueled by a massive increase in the in the money supply and um, the massive increase in the money supply um in those dates uh it, they sound like small change compared to what's actually just happened since 2008 and has happened again since the um uh chinese flu crisis or whatever you want to call it um you know there's a banking crisis obviously going on in the background with all of this um and and uh um I think these journalists would do much better to be looking at that than, than, than casting aspersions on uh, a successful entrepreneur with skin in the game, a long track record in the London Docklands of putting bums on seats, providing employment. And actually, uh, what, what Richard Desmond has delivered on um, uh, Westbury Printers is a highly, highly cultured, a, a very well conceived architectural master plan for for what is a key site but it ticks many boxes i i, I mean i've been very impressed with with the quality of the architecture um and also the approach to uh, affordable housing now, now can what, i just can i can i just ask you a question or do you want to can i just ask you or were you really you you were going to go somewhere with this you say um, something I'm, i don't want to interrupt you too much can I just ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, what is so out of the ordinary about the... Because you have to forgive me, I know so little about development. What's so out of the ordinary about this news story? You know, about the, about the 12,000 and the 30 to 50 million. Because it's being made to look as though it's just 12,000... 30 to 50 million and as though he's being um he's I being mean, uh pointed out as someone who doesn't want to build affordable housing uh, that's well, how the right. story looks so well, can you just help me out here because i'd like to understand one, there is already a consented scheme okay it was granted permission back in about 2018 and it has affordable housing it also has a new uh secondary school a new comprehensive school with three sports pitches, um, th there's a lot of public amenity in 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 the, in, in, in the development. So, the Des so Desmond is building a school and all of these other things as well. Yes, that's in the a, development. That, that part of the planning game within the consented scheme. There already there is a consented scheme for. Um, I think it's about. Um, I think it's seven hundred flats. So has well, Generic has Generic overridden the council? That, well, that, that itself is also untrue. What, what happened was Tower Hamlets failed to determine the application. They said they were minded to refuse. They ran out of time to actually make the refusal, and the scheme was referred to um, the Secretary of State for the Environment, or uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that looks at these things yeah. so it was a failure to determine what happens is um, 
if a planning application goes in, the mayor has first dibs, that's Sadiq Khan, and he can say, uh, I've got nothing to say, or I, I, I would direct you to, yeah. to grant it. But um, what he said, he's, he, he, he's sort of deferred back to Tower Hamlets and saying, well, look, you can decide it, right? Tower Hamlets have failed to do that. Therefore, in January, it was back in January this decision was made. Yeah, it it it, it got the approval. Then the the um, the process then is that the um, council have a right to appeal against the determination that comes from you know the the, the environment uh, minister, the, the local government and housing uh, secretary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and and so what they did is they appealed to the high court. Ah, right. Then in the High Court, OK, um, the uh, Mr. Jenrick accepted that it did appear that as he had decided a bit quicker than these things are usually decided, that there would have been, there was the appearance of bias. OK, and on that basis, OK, um, they they've set his decision aside for now so as things stand currently the application is still undetermined by tower hamlets okay. yeah um, um the, the point about the decision if you read the decision document it's reasoned it's very long um and it goes through all of the Tower Hamlet's objections, the different objections. There are always objections to a big scheme. Yeah. Um, and then you weigh those up against what the benefits are. And this is what the Secretary of State has already done. And he's basically... Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he, did that, he did that back in January. Yeah. And his decision was then challenged. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, I, I haven't read the court judgment. I haven't, but, why, but why did he say it looked biased why did the minister himself say that well, genuine question i mean obviously you don't really know but i mean i i i haven't read the court transcript so i don't know what was uh -huh. okay but obviously someone said well you you sat next to mr uh -huh. Des at, at this fundraising dinner and also the timing of the decision are you going to see the barrister saying now it is true is it not that um if this had been decided the following week, then the scheme would have fallen within the new um, contributions in lieu uh, yeah. element planning gain, which may have cost the developer up to another £50 million. Now, the point is that if this development had to bear another £50 million on top of the affordable housing, the secondary school and all the other stuff, right, there's a document in the appeal information that was sent to the Secretary of State, okay, and what this is to do with is the project viability, and um, national planning guidance says that the target is to get between 30% and 50% affordable housing um, if the development is capable of sustaining that level of affordable housing, but you also have to take into account the rest of the planning offer. Now, the secondary school is part of the planning offer for the consented scheme okay the consented scheme from 2018 okay has about 100 affordable apartments okay the appeal scheme the the, the, the larger scheme has something like 400 i mean it, this is all online and so i you know i'm not so when you say the appeal I'm scheme not. you mean who writes the appeal scheme uh, desmond as well well or the council well, his company, Northern and Shell PLC, owns 15 acres, which is the former Daily Telegraph printing works. Right. And, um, Northern and Shell and the Daily Telegraph had that as a joint venture. OK. Um, uh, and, 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 and that joint venture was done in the early 2000s. OK. Then... Um, Northern Shell moved that printing operation to Luton. They, they've got a huge printing works in Luton that employs as many people as those things do these days. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the site has now been taken out of that industrial use. And it's a great site. 
and a fantastic residential mixed use scheme, including the school, including the health centre, including three species of affordable homes. In affordable homes, you have what they call intermediate, which are ones that you sell to people or do share, shared ownership, right? There's London living rent ones, and then there are affordable homes, okay? So there are three species of affordable homes. And if you read the reports, there are various discussions and court sniffing goes on as to what the national targets are, etc. Now, the evidence that is given by Gerald Eve, the surveying firm, the, the, the excellent surveying firm, I mean, they, they, they really are, they, they know their onions, they, they, they're, they're the unsung heroes of my profession, really, you know, those of us that know, know, but they, they don't court publicity, they, they, they are the boffins, right, they, they really know this stuff, right. They gave their evidence on the viability of the scheme and the affordable housing offer, okay, and the social aspects offer of the development. Um, I, I'm, I'm highly critical of this idea of, of having a break even valuation, but the break even valuation is there and it sets all these things out. The point is, if you put another 50 million quid into that break even valuation, what's going to happen? It's going to make the scheme unviable, right? Yeah. So this allegation. That so just, 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 just to clarify, what you're saying is um, the Secretary of State granted consent for the project and he did it at a time. Correctly. Yeah. And, and he did it at a time where the council hadn't made a decision. And had they left it much longer or, or any longer, then something would have kicked in where the project would have cost a lot more and then very likely wouldn't have happened it, because it, it would have cost so much it, that there would have been no it, incentive. It's important to get this absolutely right, because the the point about this additional charge is it wouldn't be paid. If there's no money there to pay, it won't be paid. The scheme won't happen. Right. They've been through this process of what's viable, OK, and this is just another hurdle which the scheme may or may not be able to jump over. But the way the process works, if the scheme can't jump over it, OK, it wouldn't apply. You, it, OK, you so, the, okay so, so just, just to be clear, the newspaper, it, I inferred, and the newspaper implies that... Um, Desmond's just say 50 million quid. But that is the opposite of what you've just said, which is it's not that he say 50 million quid. He's basically just not going to do it if yeah. that that huge charge comes in. Yeah, basically, he, so he hasn't say 50 million quid he, at all. He hasn't been asked to tackle that hurdle. Yeah. But to tackle that hurdle. OK, you go back to the whole thing. And, and, and if you look at the evidence as presented, OK, if the 50 million quid has to go there, it has to come off somewhere else because when you're OK, when, when you're doing proper capitalism and not crony capitalism and you have skin in the game, right, there's a pot of money and that only goes so far. Right. And, and, and um, this is part of the problem that with with. Like Mayor John Biggs and all this, that that he's been virtually it's not mayor. yeah, all over the place. You know, Sadiq Khan, all these Labour bods. You know, Miss Cummings MP for for Bradford. Um, you know, th they are doing all this nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Oh, there must be something here, but there's no there there, right? If these people are serious about delivering affordable homes, OK, within development schemes, OK, it has to be financially viable for the developer, right? Now, the, 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 there are tons of back and forth. We could talk, well, I could talk about this with, with other valuers forever. It's almost like a license for people in my profession to do very well out of sorting out the bun fight. But us having bun fights and making fees on those things does not address the problem. The problem is bums on seats and heads on pillows, right? And there are some schemes which aren't going to happen 
and you know and they're pretty rubbishy schemes i i don't rec- I, like the spire um but going back to the financial times thing it's great to see stuart lipton on there you know the guy that conceived of the broad gate development and you know uh, um so back in the day, you know, he he, he was the big banana. You know, well, is he quoted in the piece? Oh, he's he's one of the greats. You know, I mean, no, but is he quoted in the MTPs? Is yeah. he quoted? No, right, right, right. He's he's on this new look at the planning thing because it's complicated. Um, right. So he's basically yeah. cutting red tape. Uh, helping yes. do a planning or, revolution. Or, or how about understandable red tape? Or, or red tape that actually works because what you've got is you've just got a spaghetti of red tape for the sake of red tape for virtue signaling no nothing people that couldn't organize their way out of a paper bag they don't understand business and they are not making sure that affordable homes are built and they're not making sure that um good provision from you know private you know fr- fr- from open market guys like me um you know, they, they are not um, what they're doing is they're enabling rent seekers and um, centralized control freaks. You know, they, they're trying to create a landscape or, or the net effect of what they're creating. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they realize they're doing that necessarily, do they? But, but they're creating a Stalinist control and, um, you know, command and control economy. Um, and we all know where that end, ended up, you know, with with with, with Trabants and, 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 you know, uh, basically cigarettes that bent in the middle and all of that stuff. Everybody but knows that the, what the overregulation. Is. But are you saying that there is a sort of tension between, shall we say, uh, developers and uh, planning people or policy people, which I, I, me- well, I, I mean, it's like cowboys and Indians. I mean, you know, the the the, the planners have their job to do, um, and their job, in my opinion, is to make sure that the design, the public health, and the you know the general mix is is within the ability of the infrastructure to provide, and all of those things. That's town planning. But what you've got here is you've got town planners, OK, um, in a uh, it, 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 it's an is or or a should, you know, like the is or dichotomy, David Hume, all of that stuff. Right. Um, what we have here is is what about ism at its most destructive. All the what about is going on. Meanwhile, here are 450 affordable homes in a great scheme. Right. And a secondary school, three sports pitches, a health centre, a magnificent offer in terms of a streetscape and, and a, a place where people will hang out. Um, hanging yeah. out in Canary Wharf is not very friendly these days. It's very business oriented and all the rest of it. That it, it's its character has changed since the days of, 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 of you know, Paul Reichman's Olympia in York. It was a much more inviting place then. It's not, you know, now it's not. It, it, it's like the city of London isn't particularly inviting. You know, it, it's not really encouraged. But this will be a place where people will want to be. It's beautiful. Right. I'm not, I, I can look at the plans and I can see how beautiful it's going to be because I, yeah. you know, I'm a property developer and I, you know, I understand about spaces and creating spaces and, and how that works. It's absolutely top notch okay it's addressing the 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 fact that you know there are tall buildings but they are very good tall buildings okay how tall are they uh i think the tallest one is is uh i'm not sure if it's six uh it's 50 odd stories i haven't really oh my god that's massive uh, they're, they're, they're quite tall but i mean um like the spire is is 70 or 80 stories or something you know? i knew i knew you were involved in big business roger but oh my god 50 60 well, floors is big man well i i mean the the docklands has has well and tall buildings like that are, are more common in london now i mean yeah. i i uh, the thing is you see it is is if you're going to have a green belt right 
you've got two things you can do: brownfield yeah. and up. Yeah. Right? Okay. I mean, it, that, that, it, it's it's like Mark Twain said: land they ain't making any more of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, um, keeping the docks as open space, not building over the docks. They've done too much building over the docks at Canary Wharf, in my opinion. That you know that that. Um, I mean, that's all been done under Tower Hamlets. Watch, you know that that's a heritage question. Which okay, so so Roger, so Roger, as I said, I saw a story you'd already mentioned that there was this whole thing going on in court with Jenrick and Desmond. Uh, I saw it. I knew something was up in the way that it was reported. I told you about it, and I think as far well, as I'm trying to find a stick to beat Boris with, let's face it. I, Do you I, think it's I, Boris or Desmond? Oh, right, Boris, right. No, no, they're, they're using Richard to get at Boris. You know, all of this stuff, you know, and, and, and all of these half arsed no hope Labour MPs, you know, they've got to look at their selection committees. You know, these people, they wouldn't have got uh, they wouldn't have got selected in the old days. You know, this before Blair now, you know, um, the, the simple fact is. They are anti-business, they're anti-commerce, they're anti-enterprise. And whatever you think of entrepreneurs uh, like me or like Richard Desmond or, 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 or Philip Green or Nick Leslau or, or you know, any number of, 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 of people. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, you know, sadly, you know, Cyril Dennis is no longer with us, you know, but he's did a lot in doctrines in the later days. Stephen Conway, Galliard Holmes, Sean Ryan of Ballymore. All of these guys, they have made a contribution. A lot of them have kind of gone up market going along with the, you know, the, the craziness of the current planet. The, the Financial Times is right. They're right to address this. And I'm not asking for a, a you know, an open house. Do what you like. But the thing to understand is that if you're if you're providing a, a product to the market that the market is asking for, the market wants. OK, you have to address that. You can't you can't fob them off with any old tat. The people who fob them off with any old tat are the command and control Stalinists. That's what happened in communist Russia. So what you're but saying is what's what, what you're saying in China. So what you're saying, you mean, you mean a communist command and control economy? Do you mean all of the empty, um, all that empty, you know, when they build a city in China and it's half empty? You talking yeah, about that type of stuff? There are lots of them. I, I mean, there, there, there are three large skyscrapers in Shanghai. You'll find a, a documentary on YouTube talking about why the biggest one and the latest one is still largely empty. Right. Um, and, and what you have there, you see, is you have centralized created money. And um, this is the same thing with the Spire. It's a state owned commercial enterprise. I mean, so it, what's the difference between the reasons for that building being empty in China and whatever it is that we're talking about, either here in this instance or other problems in this entrepreneurs country? Entrepreneurs listen to what the market wants and addresses those those requirements well, over here. It needs and addresses them. No, but that's 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 how a commercially based capitalism actually works. How free market capitalism works. Yeah. All of this planning regulation, all of this stuff, it's command and control. It's crony capitalism, and of course, these closet Stalinists love it. I mean, the the simple fact is that this initiative that's mentioned in the Financial Times, okay, it's getting back more to that sort of the, the spirit of the LDDC, if you like. Now, um, there are there are local de de democracy issues. OK, but I, I would argue with, um, you know, that, that, that uh, um, the virtue signaling that you see from, you know, like the current well, both current mayors, Sadiq Khan and. Um, uh, uh, but what is he virtue signaling on property as well? Well, it, it, I. He, he was quoted in the um, press a few months back saying there is now a pushback f from the community against tall buildings on the Isle of Dogs. Now, there is a problem with off plan sales of investment properties sold 
mainly in the Far East Asia. Um, OK, and it is a problem that that market's become oversupplied and a lot of them aren't rented out. And the prices that these people have been paying for them uh, are not supported by what would be affordable rentals for Londoners. OK, that is a problem. There's there's a very good report um, by uh, the Empty Homes um, Initiative. I, they were, I, I, I mean, I've copied all of my stuff into them. I've been trying to get a dialogue going because they have a point. They do have a point. Right. But their point is not addressed by virtue signaling idiots casting aspersions on you know, one of the most successful entrepreneurs that there's been in the UK, regardless of what they think about the tele, um, uh, of, of the Express and its politics or the fact yeah. that it should made a de donation to UKIP, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and they had sure. an anti-EU stance, a, a, a pro-Brexit stance. Look, the simple fact is, right, if you're in the market to provide what the market needs, right, um, the planning uh, structure or the planning regime should not militate against people who want to address that market addressing it, right? Yeah, okay. And these people are, they're part of the problem. They're not being part of the solution. They're not offering solutions. And it's interesting, the quote in the, uh, you know, um, from someone actually trying to defend the currency the current system is an absolute mess so can i just say this it appears to me that one of the things that you're saying is if you dis disincentivize this scheme then what are you possibly well, offering well, as an alternative to fix the problem of a lack of affordable housing there's already a consented scheme it's not as good as this other scheme and it doesn't offer as much affordable housing the argument has been had as to how much affordable housing the site can actually support, right? If the site had to find another fifty million pounds, okay, then something else has got to give. It's going to be less affordable housing, even less. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, you know, or, that's or, obviously or, what you're saying, right? Or, if he or, has or to... revert back to the original scheme or whatever, and maybe some people would prefer that. But in that, they're saying we would prefer to see 100 affordable homes than 400 affordable homes. So, so let me just take this away. What you're saying is the implication is that uh, had Generic not intervened, then the 50 million would have been so liable. He had no choice. He didn't intervene. The process is if a local authority fails to determine in the in the time period they have to determine an application then the the scheme can be referred yeah. to and, and the developer okay. is able to say right we we want it to go up now yeah. now then you get this appearance of bias you know so they sat next to each other at a fundraiser twelve thousand pounds is not a lot of money you know it's not a commensurate sum with a saving of 50. The 50 million pounds is basically uh, 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 that, 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 that's for the birds. It's bullshit. Right. What you have to do. I mean, I've got on my screen, I've got all the stuff. I mean, I can I can show you a bit of the. Is, is it a bit like me saying, oh, if you smoke a cigarette on a train, then you can be fined a thousand pounds. So the fact that I didn't smoke a cigarette on a train means I've saved a thousand pounds. It's that type of thing, isn't it? Because I mean, I wouldn't smoke a cigarette on a train, but if in the newspaper they say Runjan managed to save himself a thousand pounds today by not smoking a cigarette on a train. Is it like that? Yes. It, 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 yes, kind of. It is. The, you know, the, the, the argument's been had as to what this scheme can afford to do in terms of its public service or, you know, its contribution, its planning gain or whatever you want to call it. OK, and it's not inconsiderable what's been offered. But the other thing I would urge people to look at is that the footprint of the site is like 23 percent on the 15 acres, which means there are oodles of public spaces. Right in a beautiful location with beautiful buildings and not all buildings that have been built in Docklands in the last 10 years are beautiful or, or prior to that, 
or in London. You know, I, I'm not just talking about, you know, things to my taste or your taste. But but when when you, you know, when when and I'm not being Prince Charles here and complaining about carbuncles and what. Yeah. Right. Right. But this scheme is very pleasing and it is very well conceived the architect should be getting some sort of award for it, it is so what, are you, are you saying the... are you saying that the area on the ground mm. you've got the 50 you've got the 50 floor building uh, are you saying that that's just a tiny that's tiny space rank, in the yeah, whole development rank, rank, is it really a lot of space is a big development is this let me show you let me show is you. the 50 floor building just a small part of it well that's the tallest that, yeah that's what i mean there are basically five towers but not all that high uh, right. you need to look at the uh uh where's the thing to do let me just get their website up look west three printers uh oh bollocks where are we um Like I say, I mean, I, I, I've been looking at a few other development sites and I've come across a few of these other um, things. Right, now let's see. Um, share screen. Let's just do this. Um, more options. Share screen. Right, can you see that? Not yet. No, there's no sharing happening yet. I see you. All right, share screen. Yeah, it's, yeah here we go. Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, Westbury Printworks, new neighbourhood near Canary Wharf. Right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they're getting bigger and bigger. But yeah, one, this two, three, four, is, five. But then you've got stuff in the middle. Wait, this is the already consented scheme. This uh -huh. has permission. Okay. Yeah. Right. So if we then go to. Um... And is this Desmond or Desmond and Telegraph? No, no, this is Northern Shell, which is Richard um, yeah. okay. Des main holding company, Northern Shell PLC. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's, uh, um, yes, it's in the news section. I'm, what I want to do is, um, right, public exhibition. Look, 25th of May 2008, when you have a development, okay, you go out to public consultation. And this is the link. Can you see this exhibition boards? Yeah, it's okay. just coming up. Just coming up, yeah. Let's just walk through these. Look, right. So, page one, okay. There's the site. You see it in within the green in boundary the green. there. Yeah, okay. it's pretty big. Yeah, huge. It's 15 acres, okay. Um, oh, and, and so it's this massive. is the Millwall Inner Dock, which is this stretch of water here, okay. Yeah. And then down in the bottom left hand side here, where you see the jetties, that is the Dockland Sailing Centre, okay. Right, right. Um, so then if we if we just go down further now this is the proposed scheme okay um the consented scheme has 722 homes the proposed new scheme has 1500 uh -huh. homes okay yeah. with the commensurate uplift in the number of affordable homes okay and then there's all the bike storage there's the shops and offices um it's a low car parking scheme. There's a secondary school for 1,200 pupils, which should not be underestimated. I mean, that's a huge contribution to the amenity of this part of the Isle of Dogs. Okay. Uh, community centre, health centre, and a creche, right? Yeah. Okay. So then, here's the proposed scheme, okay? Um, and uh, the, this, this is just showing the silhouette of the scheme um, where you can see there's uh, this the, the lower lower level builders B1, B2, B3, B4, and then the towers T1, T2, T3, and T4. Uh -huh. And then the new tower in behind called T5, okay? So the state, and then there's a, a layout comparison. So they've got the extra density without a tremendous loss in terms of public space on, mm -hmm. on, the, on the site. I mean, that is a beautifully planned out site. Uh -huh. uh, you know, actually at street level, that's going to be a nice place to be. So then they go on and they show this is the main boulevard walking up the middle of the scheme with the vista up to Canary Wharf Tower. OK, yeah. you see number one Canada Square there. And and so then then here's all the, you know, 
architectural gubbins for all the cork sniffers. OK, then they go on and talk about the public spaces. OK, yeah. so um, this, this was all out to public consultation in, in May 2018. OK, and Roger, you're nothing to do with this. You, this is not your scheme no, at all, is it? I, I, no. I'm a student, you're just looking at it. I'm a student of my business. OK, yeah. and, and, and I, I, I love Docklands. I, 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 I put my heart and soul into this place. Yeah. In, in the late 80s all the way through the 1990s and and i i, I moved from here in 2003 yeah. okay. okay but I, i'm an islander i'm a docker right lots of my friends are you know native to the isle of dogs lots of my friends still live there okay yeah. um and 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 this this is as good as it gets uh, look okay. at this here can you see these balconies on this beautiful uh, i mean that brick cladding there that's really expensive i mean i, I you know that's that, it's not cheap to to build at this quality okay um and it looks nice you know that the, these wraparound belt it's a beautiful scheme i mean it is it's top draw stuff and there are these people all sniffy uh, and to me i, I kind of think well actually if you're going to complain about something make sure you've got something to complain about and you've actually had a good look about what but all of these people they're shooting from the lip that's what they're doing <laughs> so they, they don't know this stuff they haven't looked at this stuff there's a sailing center okay this is some community outreach they did this post the competition etc right now what i want to do is um right they haven't got my favorite uh, now now let's just look at this slide here look right this is a schedule okay showing the scheme okay it's all available online let's make that a bit bigger there we are uh -huh. right so you can see okay this here it's like we're in a helicopter okay and we are looking southeast okay southeast okay the yellow buildings here are all affordable okay the white building down down here is that's the school these are the sports pitches okay and then yellow orange and red okay are different levels of affordable okay there's uh, affordable social housing rents there's london living rents and then there's uh, what they call intermediate which is shared ownership affordable for sale okay, okay. and then all the blue stuff is basically they'll they'll, they'll charge what they can get for it um, yeah. my own particular view is, is, is that, um, selling places off plan abroad and all the rest of it, in my own opinion, that's a busted flush. I think there's far too much of that stuff. Um, but you know, uh, if they sell it for that, I would be disappointed if, if they get their pricing right, they will get bums on seats because this is a place that people are actually going to want to live. It's a beautiful scheme, yeah. you know. If they release this tomorrow, I would probably put my name down and pay a deposit to buy one um, and move in. I would love to live in this development. I cannot say that about all developments in Docklands, but this place, I would love to live in this place. It's going to be absolutely sensational. Um, so anyway, th that's the schedule. You, this this is all available um, on on the Tower Hamlets planning portal. OK, um, that, that there are now what I want to do is um, I think it's this document here. Let's just get this one up. Look. Um, planning statement. Right. So this is dated July 2018. OK, so this is all the earlier stages of negotiation and, and it evolves. And, and, and if you look on the planning portal, you'll find um, that, that uh, uh, what is eventually on the table for Tower Hamlets to say yes or no to, which they didn't even get to a committee to refuse, it was undetermined. Um, then basically there's a whole bunch of evidence that went to Robert Jenrick, which his team will have read. And they've obviously read it because if you read his decision, which I have, OK, it is reasoned. It addresses all the points. OK, I happen to agree with him. I think he's made the right decision. Right. Sure. There's this, you know, 
this um oh was it biased 12 grand that doesn't show any bias at all in my opinion i'm not saying well he must have given so the, much more money than that to the conservative party over the years there's probably a tiny amount compared to what he's given in the past, isn't it? You know, everyone's entitled to their own politics. I, mean, I wouldn't give the wankers a penny, you know. Yeah, so, no, I'm talking about the amount. I'm talking about the amount. He Because it, well, it said in the article that he gave the money in 2017. So it's not like it's the first time he's ever given them any money. Well, I, I allegedly he gave a million pounds to UKIP. I mean, I, I would say that's be money better spent to get Brexit, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, but that's just my opinion. Other people are entitled to their opinion. Anyone's entitled to make a contribution, you know, like contributions that have been made to the Labour Party, you know. I mean, I, I, I was quite involved at the time that the, the, the Millennium Dome was sold. And, and that was uh, that was a Labour government then. And I can tell you there were some, you know, there were some disappointed Tony's mates when 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 I stuck my oar in and we opened that one up and got something much better than, than Tony's cronies would have delivered. Sure. So, you know, um, so so where are we going with this? Because the question well, I, I want to do is to you show you the. Um, but Roger, just a quick question. You've read Jenrick's um, whatever statement that he made. His decision. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The you decision read the decision. That, 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 now, that, who that, else? That. Who else is saying what you're saying? Because I've only seen this article and I haven't seen anything else well, on well, Twitter. So I think whoever it is in the Daily Mail that was talking about the question and Jenrick running away in Parliament and stuff like that, it was getting a lot of likes and retweets, but I didn't have a look. Everybody was saying... Well, yeah, it's, a, it's a complete nothing burger. Yeah. And Jenrick shouldn't be wasting his time with these teenage scribbling... Um, no, I get that. I get, I get, I get what you're saying. Their... My question is this, Roger. My question is this. I know you, so you've shone a light on this for me, that I would never have access to, right? Everything that you just... This is, all, this is all publicly available documentation. I know, but I wouldn't have had the imagination to realise anything other than Robert Jenrick is corrupt because I just don't like him. So it's only because you've told me, hey, he's probably made the right... I, I don't like, you know, when he's given these Chinese flu things that he's given, I mean, you know, I, I, I haven't met him. So, but, but you know, I, I didn't kind of think, oh, he's a nice bloke, like to go out to lunch with him. We'll sit next to him at a Tory party fundraising dinner. I mean, to me, I, I would have thought, oh, that would have been a bit of a short straw. But on this, OK, if you read the report, and obviously he hasn't written it, so it's all the civil servants. There are lots yeah. of brilliant minds and brilliant people that work in these places. OK, they know their job and they know what they need to do. But my question now, is this. are saying this was an illegal decision. It's, it wasn't illegal. There was a question that there may have been some bias. Yeah. He said, yes, it does. It, it could have appeared that way. And therefore they've. Ah, so he hasn't said, yes, I'm biased. He said, I can see how some people might say that. Yes. And so what, what you had was that they 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 accepted the case that Tower Hamlets put that no, your determination needs to be withdrawn and you've got to have another look at it. So what's happening then? So, so it's not going ahead? It's all up in the air at the moment. But, you right. know, if if common sense prevails, OK, um, Mayor Biggs, OK, and the planning committee of Tower Hamlets would get down to Richard Desmond's offices with his team. He's got a brilliant team. I mean, the amount of work that's gone into this, OK, and it is a fantastic scheme. People might not like tall buildings. There are lots of tall buildings, though, in London now, and they're, they're, they are a fact of the future. So you might not like tall buildings, but let's make sure we get good tall buildings, right? That's the first thing. Then the next thing is that then comes down to, all, you know, all of the all, all of the um, objections, okay, right? Valid objections that people have, you know, it's stuff that's important to them, but the report balances them because you balance these things out. So, for instance, if you take Manhattan um, Gardens in Stratford, that's being built. There are people actually saying it should now be taken down because it ruins the view from Richmond Park uh, of St. Paul's. OK, yeah. now that, it's a beautiful scheme. 
Manhattan Loft Garden. It's 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 not affordable housing. It's very innovative, and and and, and Harry Handelsman, who's built it, is 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 a brilliant guy. He's done a lot for London in in the past. I mean, I, in fact, I'm stealing his Manhattan Lofts idea. I'm a bit I'm a bit old, I'm a bit confused. I thought I thought Richmond Park was in the southwest of England, uh, London. Yes, and, you, you, can, and, you can you can see St Paul's from it, and so there, there are people that want to protect views, like views of St Paul's, for instance, right? Sure, but I just don't understand how Docklands gets in the way of St Paul's from Richmond. Well, no, no um, Stratford is 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 up a bit. Yeah, but I thought Richmond yeah. was down here. St yeah, Paul's yeah, is here. Stratford's up there, and St Paul's is in the middle. It is in the line of sight. You can see it. They got okay. both. But what I'm saying is that um, there's acute housing need. There's a massive shortage of affordable housing in London. Yeah. And that that is in large part due to the banks and the financing arrangements, international finance, which is available as debt for investors from abroad. OK. And the planning authority, the planning authorities, they've enabled it. And what they've cooked up supposedly to, to solve the problem does nothing of the sort. Also, the government's um, help to buy scheme. You know, that's a nonsense, too. It, 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 it's a license to push up the prices um, or, or, or to, to, you know, to to to. Uh, I mean, it's increasing some profits for some developers at the expense of actually enabling people to buy places because it's only available on new homes and so roger have... can you uh, can you get rid of the share screen oh right sure yeah um so i mean i've been planning to actually do a, a, a full-on analysis of uh has that gone off now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's good it's good obviously but i've got very busy with with all of my own things um, well i've, I've, gra I've, grabbed, I've grabbed i've grabbed an hour because it's an excellent case study of everything that's wrong with the planning system right. um, in terms of delivering what needs to be delivered. It delivers a great deal and they've turned their noses up at it and people are saying, oh, it's all over this extra 50 million quid. Well, there's, there's, there, there are three reports giving evidence of what the break even of this scheme is. Now, all that break even stuff. The money? Because it must be, I mean, is it a billion? I mean, it must be hundreds of millions, this this thing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's over a billion, the, 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 the end use value. Um, but, you know, it, it's it, it's expensive to build. There's also a lot of planning gain that's gone into it. You know, um, uh, the point is, you don't take on something like that if you're not going to make money. You don't do it for the fun of it. It doesn't sound like a risk-free activity. It, it is definitely not risk free. The property development, when you actually get into the ground and come out of the ground, is absolutely full of pitfalls. I used to say about some of my sort of investors that weren't quite as passive as I would have liked them to be. Uh, you know, I, I used to say we've had a few successes and now they all fucking think they're Donald Trump. And, you know, like Donald Trump can build, you know, I mean, you know, people sort of say, oh, well, no, he can't. He's really, well, he can. He's a really talented property developer. Okay, people with all those real TV. That man knows about building. You know, some people. Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just say for anyone who might be watching who thinks that I'm currently a card carrying Trump man because of the fact that we're <laughs> having this conversation, I would just like to say this just to, just to be irritating. Um, I understand that Donald Trump uh, knows also how to get unions on side in order to build things quickly. Um, or at least in the past, that's uh, one of the things that he was able to do. In my day, it used to be called beer and sandwiches, mate. And, you know, the, the, the point is, is if you don't know what beer and sandwiches is, you've been hanging out with too many Stalinists. Because, you know, in terms of a life of stick and carrot, you know, I would rather have beer and sandwiches with someone any other than, than, than have a bullet delivered in the back of the head. But with all this iconoclasm going on, all this virtue signalling, from these, you know, frankly clueless politicians criticizing something that they haven't done done their homework. Are you saying are you saying Trump knows how to talk to the people that he's working with? Is that what you mean? How to I, treat people. I understand. Very good at delegating and, and he does empower people he delegates to. 
Yeah. That's not say that he always makes the right decision or they make the right decision, but he is very good with people and people around him are very loyal to him. And he is a good builder. He knows building. He knows building. You, you can't yeah. take that away from him. Regardless okay. of what you think of it, he does know his onions. It's a fact. Yeah. Well, Roger, I think we should have another conversation about this um, at some point. But do you think that um, you've got any of the points across that people might need to understand about the difference I've, between what's I've, in the done article? Sev- I've done several blogs of it, I mean, and, and um, you know, it's there's a, a element in this is a politics of envy kind of thing. You know, Richard Desmond is incredibly successful. You know, um, and yet he's still striving to to do something like this. You know. I mean, if I were him, I probably wouldn't bother. I mean, I'd love to live in one of these places. I think I think it's a great scheme, right? But the fact that he's still got the engine, you know, still got the foot spur and the, the balls to to be doing something like this, should be celebrated. It shouldn't be pilloried like by these people. It's it's not on. It really isn't. You know, if if we're going to go forward as a country and bring people together and you know um, have all the the you know the good news. you don't bring people together you, you you don't do that by promoting some sort of class war approach to to things you know i mean it's just very very disappointing very i mean what would you what, what would the alternative be i mean if if they stop this from going through who's going to do the development and are you saying it has to be a central planned um yeah. control thing that's that's so, what you'd end up with because nobody would incentivize to do it well i mean I mean, there are such things as compulsory purchase powers and all the rest of it. But, you know, we, we live in a democracy and, and, um, and we're supposed to have a market economy, for God's sake. And these people are acting like we're living in bloody Stalinist Russia. And I just think that's got to stop. And I, I fully support the Financial Times article. I think it's great. I think the Daily Mail article, I think what appeared in Labour list and all the rest of it is just half assed class war. Um, you know, and what about the Times piece? Stuff. It's what water. About- Same thing. Absolute rubbish. You know. I'll, 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 you know. I mean, obviously, when Richard got the um, Richard Desmond got 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 the Daily Express, it yeah. put a lot of people's noses out of joint. You know. Oh, yeah, because I mean, the mail the mail are not going to. I'm with Richard. I said, well, fuck them. But you know, I mean, that's that that's it's a if if they're in a market and it's competition, all the rest of it. If he's one. In the same way that we won Brexit, you know, right? Was he was he a property developer before? Um, before he's, no, he's a publisher. Yeah, and and, 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 and um, he, his background is is in selling advertising, in publishing, and supporting public publications. Yeah, um, and and so one person sort of sort of always oh, a pornographer. I mean, he used to uh, uh, own some, uh, you know, um, titty mags. You know, well, oh, there are. I mean, I've looked at titty mags, you know, I mean, blimey, I, I, I like the ballet, as you know. So <laughs> <laughs> the simple fact is that um, uh, Northern and Shell uh, were the publishers of um, uh, OK magazine. OK, right. right. Which became the top selling magazine in the whole world. OK. Um, and OK, it's a celebrity thing and all the rest of it. And, and, and um, uh, uh, but it took on hello and won. Right. So, I mean, if you read his biography, it's, 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 it's very interesting. It, it, right. it, it's, worth, it's worth reading. But there's a lot to Richard Desmond and you won't get the truth in the Daily Mail or in the Times. You won't get it from, um, you know, other uh, uh, other media moguls because I mean, he's done us all a favour. Um, there's a very good interview that he did, the Jewish Chronicle interviews him. It's quite a long interview, but I, I, anyone should watch it. It's really interesting. Um, the other thing, I mean, he's a great drummer. He plays drums. He, he's in a band with Roger Daltrey from The Who, and he's a good drummer. You know, uh, you know, he, 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 that was his first mu- his first public publication was a music magazine the musical instruments and stuff right mm-hmm. 
he was involved with all of the original fanzines for the Rolling Stones and um, uh, the Beatles and things like that. Um, you know, so he he's done all that Richard Branson's ever done and more, you know, from a different aspect, if you see what I mean. And, um, you know, and yet, I, do you know what I think it is? It's that um, Richard Branson is a public schoolboy kind of thing um and uh but it, uh, sort of you know with his old man was a judge I think he was, no he's a colonel i think in the army ah sorry okay um, and um the he uh, uh, obviously richard's jewish he's, he's he, i really listened to the story that you know he tells it in his book um, and it's very interesting but what, what you know, um, he's much more of a man of the people than, you know, even though he comes from a, a basically was of a privileged background, fell on hard times and then built it all back up um, and what have you. And, uh, you know, nobody handed it to Richard Desmond on a plate. No one. You know, he's a, he is a self-made man. That's what he is. Now, I admire that. You know, I don't admire everything everybody's done or, you know, but I admire that. You know, I admire Nick Leslow, too. You know, he's another self-made guy with a similar sort of story to, to Richard Desmond. Um, and we don't celebrate these characters enough, you know, that's in my book. I, I, I you know, so um, what what this scheme is, is something that should be celebrated not used as a political stick to try and beat Boris Johnson with, which at the end of the day is really what it is. They're trying to get at Boris via Robert Chenrick. Yeah. It's, it's political. It's got bugger all to do with, you know, it, it, there's no there there, like I said. There is no sizzle in this sausage. It is, it is a dead parrot. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> there's nothing here. It's nonsense. Well, Roger, thank you very much for um, giving a completely different view to one that you'd find on uh, social media and uh, the papers. All you have to do is go and read all the evidence, read the decision, and there's nothing wrong with the decision. The circumstances surrounding it, you know, the nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you know, sure, at first blush, you, 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 you can sort of uh, try and pull a fast one with them. But when you look, there's no there there. Okay. Neither, nothing. Nicks absolutely weak fa there nothing there but what there is there is a fantastic property development wonderful scheme it really is one of what one of one of the better ones it's top draw in my opinion well i have a funny feeling that you're going to be talking to me about housing again soon because i'm going to ask you to so um thanks very much no worries all right Ranjan. good talk thanks, to Roger. You, take care thanks a lot bye, bye. Yeah.